Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Indian Nations Baptist Church. It's very good to be with everybody today. Well, please bow your heads as I open us up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you, God, for giving us this time to come together and to worship you, God, to praise you, Lord, and thank you for all that you do for us, God. Please, God, help us to remember the sacrifices that you made for us and the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us, Lord. Thank you, God, for the love that you show us, and thank you, God, for this church that you give given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Announcements for today. As always, at 10 a.m., we have Sunday school, and we do have that in Zoom as well. We are studying in, in uh, Thessalonians in our Sunday school class, so I want to encourage anyone to come. Uh, we did study today. We took a slight detour today and, and went to Matthew and studied about the resurrection, something for us to always keep in our mind and always think about and be mindful of. And I know East, the Easter season is gone, but it should really, for Christians, should never, ever really be gone. We should always be mindful of Jesus's, Jesus rising from the grave. So I invite you guys to Sunday school. Uh, as always, at 11 a.m., we have our in-person services. On Tuesday at 1 p.m., ladies' Bible study. 3.30 to 5.30, meals for kids 1 through 18 years of age. Wednesday nights, we have our virtual Bible study with Pastor Randy. Looking ahead, of course, do not forget Mother's Day, May 8th. Please do not forget your mothers. Wednesday night, Bible study for all ages, May 18th. June 3rd, camp fundraiser. See Tracy for donations and details. Vacation Bible school will be June 20th through the 22nd. Golly, I can't believe all the camp stuff is already, we have to think, be thinking about it already, right? And some people have been thinking about it all year round, but the Choctaw Chickasaw Family Camp, July 4th through 7th, Indian Falls Creek, July 31st through August 4th. So those are things for us to be thinking about, be mindful, um, be uh, thinking about those who, who maybe don't have the funds to go. We do have special um, ways to donate for those folks so we can, um, pay for people who don't have the funds to go as well. Notes for today, very much needed. Sunday school teachers, nursery workers, and etc. We still need people to volunteer to help in the church that, that goes on on a regular basis. The Annie Armstrong mission offering is upon us and will continue until the end of May. And of course, Indian Nations Baptist Church music, music CDs are still available. In the back, or see Angela. Do you have something to add, Angela? Yes, there's also DVDs available. Oh. Uh, the church anniversary slash uh, False Creek for last year. Oh, they're that's awesome. The same DVD. So they're all in the back. All in the back, all available for uh, a donation of any amount, correct? All right. At this time, I'll turn things over to Deb for a prayer emphasis. Good morning, church family, and those that are joining us online. Thankful for another beautiful day, and I hope you've remembered to count your blessings each and every day this week. God is so merciful and good to us each and every day. No matter what we might be going through, He's always there for us, isn't He? Our request today, of course, we want to continue to remember Kyle and RG and Charlene, Leroy, uh, Dave, Mr. McGillberry, Sally, Chris's brother Steve and his friend Sandra that he requested prayer for, Jonathan and others that are needing encouragement, Randy and his family, the Greens, the Alangas, our different missionaries throughout the world, um, and the work that's going on in the church, the need for workers, and the different events and activities that we have coming up. Let's remember those in our prayer. If you will, bow with me as we remember these. Our dear Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege to come before your throne to bring these petitions to you. We know that you know all about each and every one of these situations, and you are there and present. We just pray a healing touch for these that are 
afflicted with different illnesses and diseases, that you will touch them and give them a healing, healing touch from you. Let them feel your presence. Let them know that you are with them each and every day. We pray for all of our missionaries throughout the world, the Alangas and the work that they are doing there. We pray for our church and the events that are coming up, that you, your will be done in each and everything that we do. Let us be a voice in our community to bring those in to uh, worship and fellowship and uh, lead them to Christ. We pray that you'll be with Randy and his family, be with the Greens. We just pray that you'll touch each and every one here today, dear Lord. Open our ears and our heart to the word that Randy will be bringing to us from you. Let it be a blessing to us. Let it be an outreach that we can use this to reach others with your word. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen.
the last verse. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace thy victory's won, if this cold wave I will not lose. thousand reasons and psalms 104 says in verse 33 i will sing to the lord as long as i live i will sing praise to my god while i have been may my meditation be pleasing to him for i rejoice in the lord day to be in the house of the Lord. Um, okay, so now go ahead and open up your bulletins to the scripture reading uh, part. Hopefully I did my job. Does everybody have a bulletin? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
try to read with me. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and the glory of God the Father. Um, Mary Jo, would you please uh, pray over our tithes and offerings? Father and Father, thank you again for another beautiful day and opportunity to be here. And it's a choice that we have made because we love you and want to hear your word and follow you among other believers. So Father, yes. I ask you at this point that you bless the offering. And thank you for this opportunity to give back what you have blessed us with. Thank you, Father. Continue to guide us in this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
bow your heads with me. Father God, I just want to thank you for the love, the grace, and the mercy that you give us, Lord. Um, Lord, we belong to you. We love you, Father. We need you, Lord. We need your words as much as we need food and water, even more so, Lord. Father God, just continue to provide, Lord. And thank you for this vessel that's about to preach your word. Just continue to be a presence in our life, Lord. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our reading this morning out of Philippians chapter 2. I had a lot more, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> but I wanted just to put that much in there. Um, and so when you look at the passage from 9 to 11, the word wherefore or <clears throat> for this purpose, okay, God has always established himself as one who is purposeful in your life. Meaning, there's meaning to life in Christ. And what we looked at, again, these past few weeks about the Passion Week, I'm going to finish it up today. This is actually a continuation of last week, actually. It just It's just a long sermon that I've had to break up into pieces. So... Um, because I know, I know Mother's Day is next Sunday, so I've been preparing for that as well. <clears throat> I thought about doing a pre-Mother's Day sermon, but I'm just going to wait till Sunday because Father's Day is coming too, you know. So a um, <clears throat> little bit about family and uh, God's plan, God's design for the family. And so, but this passage is a summary of what we've been looking at the past few weeks and the continuation of it. If you look there again, it says, therefore, or wherefore, and I'm, this is King James Version, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue you saw every knee now every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father now the word that you see in some versions is for for this reason if you look there in verse 6 just before that, and this is kind of more of what I was wanting to, but I, I know there's not much room in the bulletin. But it says, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And referring to Christ Jesus, it says, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a serpent, serpent, servant, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Still got peanut butter cookie in my mouth, I think. Took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. And again, this is kind of a combination of all that we've been looking at through the Passion Week in our Bible studies as well. And, um, <clears throat> and this, this kind of just finalizes the, the series uh, I, I was wanting to, to finish with. But again, he, he, he makes note here that in verses 6 to 8, is kind of like the life summary or just a summary in general 
of why we need Jesus Christ. Why do we need him? And last week we asked the question, what do I have when I have Jesus? We talked about the judicial act last week about justification. You remember that? The courtroom setting um, that even though we stand guilty, we're judged and found wanting or we're found lacking. There's nothing we can do. But yet the judge himself takes off of his judicial coat or cloak and steps down and he takes our place. He takes our sentence, which is a sentence of death and bears upon himself that pays the price we could never pay. Okay. And by that, we saw we have access, access by faith into this grace. Now, this grace that's by definition means that we, there's something we do not deserve. We don't deserve it. But he freely gives it to us. Now, this last, again, this last section, <clears throat> you had that little summary there from verse 6 to 8. It says, for this reason now, verse 9, for this reason, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. When you read... <clears throat> When you read through the book of Hebrews, Hebrews has many instances where it speaks of Jesus as being superior to any others, even the angels. It was he who was exalted. It was he who was prophesied 800, 1,000 years prior to his birth. There are images of him through sacrifices, even in the Garden of Eden. You recall that one a few weeks ago where because of their disobedience, Adam and Eve's disobedience, there, was, there had to be innocent life taken, blood shed in order to provide them coverings. Because what did they try to cover themselves with? Fig leaves. Remember that? But here, even here, we see a foreshadowing of the coming Christ. Okay. Again, when you read, again, when you read Scripture, read it with this in mind that everything is about Jesus. Okay. Pertains to his prophecy, his birth, his life. His death, burial, and resurrection, and soon coming kingdom. Okay? Everything wraps around those 66 books. But he says he has given him a name. And again, Hebrews speaks of that quite a bit about the superiority of Christ. Okay? If you'll read, <clears throat> if you'll turn over to the book of 1 Timothy. I'll have you turn in quite a bit. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, this is the heart that the, the, the writer speaks of when he preaches the gospel, when he speaks of Jesus and he, 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 he reiterates the need for men to hear. He says in verse 4 of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, he says, or let me, verse 3, so, I'm sorry. It says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth. You see, there we see God's heart. We see His will. We see His desire. That even those who mock the church, maybe who have belittled you in your lifetime. Even those who 
stand on the street corners and deny the existence of God. God's heart is to save them. His heart is to love that person, regardless of who they may claim to be. But again, he says, who will have all men to be saved. And look at verse 5, and here's that name again. He says, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, establishing establishing that superiority that we see in the book of, like in the book of Hebrews. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And it, and it clarifies in verse 6, or it, under, it, it, it supports it in verse 6. He says, who gave himself a ransom for all. <clears throat> there again, referring back to his sacrifice, his atoning sacrifice, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now look in the book of Acts, if you will. The book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. I don't hear no pages turning. Okay. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. That's quite a statement, isn't it? That's quite a statement for this world to, to hear, to know. For there is, for neither is there salvation in any other. That's offensive to a lot of people in this world. That's offensive language to those who feel like they believe in a different way. It offends them. Because it says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Listen to that imperative. We must be saved, he says. And there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Again, we asked the question last week, <clears throat> what do you have? What do you have when you have Jesus? And again, I, I only covered maybe one or two. You know, we have, for one, we have peace with God. Remember that word, irene in the Greek. And then we also have access. Access was actually my very first word that I used in my alphabet of all the things we have when we have Christ. And again, there, I'll, I'll have a time when I go through that. <clears throat> I'll, I'll try to cover at least three to four words related to the alphabet. It's kind of a, uh, just, a just a general study. Um, but we'll get through it. We'll, we'll, we'll get there someday. But we talked about peace and access. Each letter, again, will have a specific title to it later. But what do we have when we have Christ? And then we talked about in our Bible study, remember our Bible study, I, di I didn't get to complete all of that. Was that the one I did outside? I did one outside this week. How many of you saw that one? <clears throat> okay, I showed our cows out there, not, not our cows, but I showed cows out there in the, in the pasture, in our pond, the pond is ours, my uncut grass. <clears throat> um, but it felt so good to be outside. I, I shot it outside. Plus, the cat was loud. The cat was loud that day. <clears throat> but here we have that question. <clears throat> what do you have when you have Jesus? <clears throat> In looking at, again, the, 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 final, the final part of this series, I want to ask the question, kind of an antithesis or opposite. What do you have when you don't have Jesus? What do you have when you don't have Jesus? For a lot of people, if you're not a Christian or if you're not saved or you don't, you're, you're, you're not one of those Christian people or you don't, you know, you're not one of those 
church-going folks. For some, they feel like you can just uh, ignore that type of life or that type of calling, that salvation. You can just ignore it and it doesn't matter. But oh, it does. It does matter. If you look in the book of John real quickly, John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, it speaks of our, again, one of those, what we, what we might call a Magna Carta verse, the verse in the Bible. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, one of the first verses I ever learned as a child. But there's even a more telling verse because it gives, it gives the opposite side. It gives the other side of the story. We know that God loves us. He gave us His Son, Jesus. And whoever believes, whoever believes, won't have to perish but can have everlasting life. And here's that, here's that second part. It says in verse 17, God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Connect that with the other verse in Acts chapter 4, where there's no other name given among men. Okay. He sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And look at, and here's, here's, the, here's, here's the verse. Here it says in verse 18. He says, He that believeth on Him is not condemned. Okay, that's, that, that's speaking of us. But he that believeth not. And that's our question. What do you have when you don't have Jesus, okay? It says, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Already. You can't simply ignore the gospel. If you think you can ignore it, you're wrong. The gospel is God's way of rescuing us delivering us from, an uns from, the, from the certain judgment that's to come. He, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You know, in, in, in a lot of times, in, in a lot of my sharing, sometimes you share the gospel with somebody and they'll say, oh, well, that, that's good for you. See, what they don't understand is that their condemnation is already in effect. Okay? It's already, it's already a, a, in effect. But he says here, He that believeth not is condemned already because, and here's the reason, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, referring back to John 3, 16. And here's, <clears throat> here's the condemnation. Look at verse 19. And it says, and this is the condemnation that light is coming into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You see, we live in a day and an age where, <clears throat> I hate to go too far into this because it can get long. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? That clock's not working. What time is it, Kyle? Oh, man, I've got plenty of time. All right. <clears throat> we live in a day and age where there's a philosophy of life that says you can believe anything you want to and you can live any way you want to without regard to the consequences. Look at the news. There are people out there in our world committing crimes and thinking that it's okay. <clears throat> there are people out there living in our world who feel like you can be disrespectful to anybody you want to, and it's okay. 
There are people out there who live life and they have no regard for humans, the, the, the sanctity of human life. And they think it's an inconvenience. But folks, when, when you see folks and they, they hear the gospel, they quickly turn and become belligerent. They quickly turn and become anti-Christian. They don't like to hear the biblical message because they, they, they claim that the biblical message is hate speech. God hates you. God hates you. God hates you. You hate me for who I am and what I believe. But the reality is God actually loves you and wants to see you saved. Because why? Because there's a judgment coming. What do you have when you don't have Jesus? You have condemnation upon you. Condemnation is simply that word which means everything about the judicial system that points to your guilt, your, your judgment, and the sentence to follow. That's what condemnation is. And Jesus says, I, I, I'm come to save you from that. Because the penalty, the sentence is forever. Verse 21 says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. In other words, God takes care of that. He provides the forgiveness. He provides the new heart. It's like David said in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God. And the person that used to be is brand new. I think I can speak for anybody here. Before you came to Christ, and since that point, God has changed your life, hadn't He? You wouldn't be, I don't think you'd be here if it wasn't for that. The change that He brings in your life. Romans chapter 8. Again, speaking of what do you have when you don't have Christ? Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So if you have Christ, you have no condemnation. Remember that verse that we read there in the book of... <clears throat> Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, it says, Wherefore God hath also, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow things in heaven, things in the earth, and things on the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Keep that in mind. Keep that, keep that in your other window, okay? But he says again, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So what is, again, condemnation? Is that judicial term where everything from your guilt your indictment and your sentence is all packed into a package. That's what you have when we have not the Savior. Well, here's the indictment. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 says in verse 10, and this is out of this, this is out of several passages out of the book of the Old Testament specifically in, uh, in the book of Psalms. <clears throat> and here's the Old Testament condemnation or the indictment. He says, as it is written in Psalm 14, chapter 1, there is none righteous, 
No, not one. There is none that seeketh, or there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. In Psalm 5, verse 9, it says, Their throat is an open sepulcher. That word sepulcher is a, is a word, another word that means tomb, a grave. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Psalm chapter 10 verse 7 says, Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 16 it says, Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction, it says, and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. And in Psalm 36, verse 1, it says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's a, that, that, that's a world of indictment. <clears throat> in other words, if those were your charges, you're cooked. <laughs> That's it. There's no hope. And that's what we have when we have not Christ is condemnation. You see the indictment. In verse 23, here's the burden of proof. Verse 23 says, as the judge hits his gavel, I'm going to bust that water. He snaps his gavel and he says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Remember that passage there in the book of John, chapter 3. Those who have not believed, <clears throat> they are condemned already. But the message of the gospel is that Jesus has always sought to save through His payment for your sin and mine. Back again to Philippians. He's given Him a name. He's highly exalted Him. <clears throat> and given Him a name which is above every name. <clears throat> that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Verse 11 says, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He was found to be humbled and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Again, the question, what do you have if you have not Christ? What do you have when you have not Christ? <clears throat> Condemnation is the simple answer. If you look in the book <clears throat> of the book of Revelation, we'll close with this. Revelation 20 speaks of a, a historical and also a pattern and also a fulfillment of things to come. There are things that are written within these passages that are yet to happen. Okay, prophecy. But in this final episode, you see something happen. <clears throat> and what you see is the very act of righteousness, the very act of everything God has given to us as a deliverance, as a way out, as a way of escape, comes to a stop. <clears throat> There's a stopping point. 
And he says here in Revelation 20, as, as John is seeing this great vision from, from the Lord, he says this, he saw, he sees these magnificent things and they're almost to the point of being terrifying, overwhelming to him. And he says, I saw an angel, verse 1. He saw the old serpent, the dragon, the devil. I saw thrones, he says in verse 4. And then he says, and then I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. This great white throne is where Jesus sits. And then he says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Folks, there's coming a day. How far in our future, I, I don't know. But it's coming. Where we will stand fully cognitive of all that's going on, just as we are his sitting here today and you see each other, maybe you greet one another here in just a few minutes. We'll stand, it says, before God. And then it says, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And it says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell were delivered up delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works notice that word every man again in in our, in our world there's so much <clears throat> there's just so much unbiblical things going on Are we to continue to love those people? Sure. I like what my old pastor said. He said, but mark her down. There's going to come a stop to it. And there are going to be a lot of surprised people. There are going to be a lot of people in shock that day when they stand before God. Because it says this, Verse 15 of chapter 20 in the book of Revelation, it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's the sentence. You saw the indictment. You see the burden of proof. Now you see the sentence. And you would think, well, you know, cast into the lake of fire, well, you know, <clears throat> burned up and gone. No, the Bible speaks of that lasting forever, the anguish and the pain and the suffering simply because we do not believe in God. We have not taken his gospel message that he says he loves you and wants to save you because this day is coming. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What does John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him. That same person appears here in the book of Revelation. And whosoever, that whosoever in John 3, 16 is found in verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And then it speaks about heaven on, in chapter 21. In chapter 21, it says in verse 27, it says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You might be standing there or sitting there in your pew and saying, Well, Pastor, I never heard of a book of life. Well, how do you get written in the book of life? By receiving the gospel. Simple as that. 
Jesus, I need you to save me. I want to be saved because I know there's a judgment coming. How far? I don't know. It could be very soon. The way this world and the situation and things that are in the events that are going on in this world, it could be very soon. And you don't want to be running around thinking, there's got to be somebody at that church. Pastor's got to answer his phone. No one's receiving my text. My text messages aren't going through. What's happened? <laughs> he wants to save you now before it's too late. So again, the question, what do you have when you have not Christ? Is certain condemnation that carries with it, again, an indictment, a burden of proof, and a sentence that's forever. But again, God has provided, and just like the book of Romans chapter, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, The other side of the condemnation is knowing Christ because it says, again, there is therefore now no condemnation. How you get there is receiving the gospel, the message that God loves you, those which are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 5, it says again what we read last week, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's here to save you. And again, that's the message of where we look, begin to look at through the Passion Week, even though it took us about five weeks. The meaning of going to the cross, His burial, His death, burial, and then His resurrection is to give you new life. Let me ask you to bow your heads for a moment. Just real quickly, I want to ask you a question. I want you to think hard about this because again, there, there, there is there's a day when that sentence is coming. Let me ask you, without looking around, without considering anybody else, have you been saved? Are you saved today? If the Lord would return today, would you go with to be with the Lord? Or if you were to just collapse right there where you're at, collapse and pass away, would you go to be with the Lord? Again, it's a question we put out to you because, again, we, 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 we care about you. We love you. But more than that, God loves you and wants to see you saved. There's only condemnation without Christ. But with Him, there is peace. Would you give your heart to Christ today? And simply by raising your hand, you just, you know, takes great courage to do something like this. But if you've never been saved, you've never come to a point in your life where you've, you, you've made a prayer to say, Jesus, I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and reign. Take control of my life. If you've never done that in your life, would you simply just raise your hand? We're just going to pray for you. I'm not going to go back there and pull you up here or drag you up here or mention you by name. But if you've never done that, would you simply just put your hand up and say, I've never done that. Anybody? I've never given my heart to Christ. Anybody? All right. I hope you've been honest today. Because again, if you haven't been honest, there will be a day when you will be. But again, the judgment is set. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your death. We thank you for your resurrection. Because through your act, we can have life everlasting. Life eternal, knowing you as our Lord and Savior. What do we have when we have not you? 
it is certain condemnation. But you've given us the remedy, and that's the gospel, the good news. Thank you for loving us enough to show us that, to draw us to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will, let's stand as we're going to sing a hymn, I believe. <clears throat> Again, during this invitation, this invitation is simply for you to acknowledge your need. Something you need to pray about, something you need to talk about, I'll be here. Again, if you need Christ, you can come and speak with me here in the front. I'll, I'll show you how to be saved as we sing. You come, all right? Page 138, Jesus painted on I agree. 
face to plain Sally comes to bring that to pray for Wayne and his family, basically all her family. She's she's a great heart for bringing things to the Lord. Give it to Him. She can't fix it by herself. Family, other families can't make it. But as she comes, she's faithful to bring those things to the Lord. So let's continue to pray for their family. Titus comes with his family here. Says they want to just be prayed for by the church. They want to seek after God and whatever God would do in their life is just a measure of God's grace. God just wants to pour it out on us because He loves us. He loves you. And that's what they come seeking today. To get involved, to do what God desires. So let's pray for them as well. All right. Would you just agree with me by saying amen? Amen. All right. Thank them for coming. Thank for prayers. Continue prayers. And uh, God be glorified. Well, next week is uh, Mother's Day. And, um, you know, I don't have my mom, my mom with me anymore. Uh, I think of her, not just on Mother's Day. I think of her a lot. But... Uh, my, my, my children's mother or my wife, you know, and others bring them. I think the church and I think we're going to have a special meal by the men. <clears throat> and so we're going to, are we going to talk about that again today? Jerry, oh, okay, we're going to talk some more about it. Okay, <clears throat> I think we made some plans uh, last week. So uh, the men will be furnishing the meal. So you might take your antacids before you come. Okay. But uh, it'll be a good meal. Bring bring your family and let's celebrate Mother's Day. And even if they're not here with us anymore, it's always good to remember them in our in our in our lives and in our in our families as we keep them together. Uh, I'm going to have a special message next week for Mother's Day and as well for Father's Day as well. And so um, <clears throat> it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. Uh, but to speak about moms and uh, not simply because of my mom, <clears throat> but other other things that revolve around motherhood. So I um, invite you to be back next week. Um, also on the 18th, is it the 18th? On the 18th, you'll probably saw in your bulletin. I think it was in the bulletin. We're going to start meeting back face to face on Wednesday nights. OK, so I'm going to bring you something a little special to help us with that continuance on Wednesday nights and so um, but I'll bring that for you on that day or that night I believe at 630 and so uh, the adults from for my section will be downstairs okay we'll have like a classroom setting so we'll be down there and so we'll have classes for everybody uh, or activities Bible studies just general things to to get our church life going and continuing and it's been good it's been really good and um, I remember this guy when he was a little bitty guy at Falls Creek, well, <clears throat> bouncing off the wall, getting getting gotten on to by everybody. But good to see brother and his family with us today. And so God bless them. All right. Any other closing announcements? <clears throat> Don't make my bullet. I probably should not my heart. I probably do, but we'll sing our uh, dismissal hymn together. I know it's kind of a it's kind of a sad song, but again, it's we can we can kind of rev it up a little bit and uh, sing our dismissal hymn together.
And we've got a lot of other things. If you keep looking ahead, a lot of things that you can be involved in and help us. And uh, good to be able to do that. All right, let's let's all guys will feel stand with us, and uh, we'll sing our dismissal hymn. <clears throat> Jimmy goes For your love for us. We thank you for your continued abiding grace. Even though we may stray far from you, your voice hearkens unto us to come, to return simply, softly. Thank you for calling out to us, Lord. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for Jesus. For one day as we stand before you, you'll tell us not guilty to come into your kingdom forever. Thank you for the love you show us through your words to show us how much you love us and how we respond to you. Thank you for giving us the walk, the strength to walk this life. Even in the midst of turmoil in our world, you give us truth. Establish us in it and thank you for it. Dismiss us with your love. We continue to pray for these in our bulletin and those who have come today, their families. We lift them up before you. Thank you again for what you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. <clears throat>